Hello, it's the next part of robot dog development. And what I've been doing for quite some time into last year is developing Open Dog, which is an open source robot. And this robot has rigid joints driven by motors and ball screws. And we've got quite a way with that, doing an inverse kinematic model, doing interpolation for the motor positions so we can move the feet in perfectly straight lines, interpolating for all the positions on the way from A to B. But we still haven't actually made it walk properly, or at least not really dynamically. At the moment, the joints are so rigid that when a foot hits the ground, if the dog not perfectly level and the ground's not perfectly flat and it pushes it back the other way and basically causes it to tip all over the place. So last time I sort of forked the development and we made another test leg and this test leg is a compliant leg that will comply with the ground when it hits it. So this one is using a brushless motor and an encoder to have a holding torque which tries to hold it in position, but of course we can back drive it and that makes a virtual spring. And then we try to dampen that spring, effectively making it compliant with the ground by looking at the actual position we're forcing the leg to and using a PID controller to move the motor some way to that position. And that meant when we push it down and the leg's moving, it complies with the ground and um, that's nice and lovely. So basically the plan is to use this leg to work out what we need to do with open dog. And of course we can't easily back drive those joints. So we're gonna to have to simulate it using the foot sensors and an IMU in the dog's body, which is gonna be a bit of a harder task, which is why I'm doing this leg first, which is a bit easier to see if my hypothesis is correct. Well, I've now built another three of these legs and we're gonna put them on a frame and see what happens when there's four of them doing the alternate diagonal stepping, which um, people refer to as the trot gate. And that looks like this. So we've got our four legs on a basic frame made of aluminum extrusion and CNC parts that holds all those legs rigid, hopefully. So we can put some electronics in, put the batteries in, and hopefully go and move those legs and see if it's dynamically stable by itself. So I fitted some electronics to the top of the dog. We've got some O-drives, a Teensy, and some switches. So just a closer look at those, they are the 56 volt O-drive 3.6. Each one has its own power, and there's a battery lurking below each one to provide enough power for the four legs. Of course, we've got the encoder cables and the power cables that go off to the motor, and serial lines that go to the Teensy. So we've got a big emergency stop switch there, which just resets the O-drives by pulling their reset pin low, which resets them and stops all the motors. And I've got two switches here, which are to initiate each O-drive and initiate the motors and put the holding power on. So I've got the motors powered up and the dog's standing on its legs. You'll notice it's actually supported with bungees, but these are pretty loose. So there's a bit of a design flaw, which is the motors and these springy joints aren't quite strong enough to hold the whole mass of the dog now with the frame and the batteries. So uh, really it's just a test for R&D though to of course check compliance with the ground. So we've got these anti-gravity measures, but they're not holding it very much. So now let's just activate that leg and you'll see of course it falls to this side as the other legs comply slightly due to the natural spring. And that natural spring, remember, is just the motors trying to hold their position with current limiting. So we've got that leg just doing the process of going up and down. There's no compliance set on that at the moment. So you can see, of course, the dog is falling down and getting pushed up when the leg hits the ground. And if I shove something under there, then uh, that effect is even more noticeable. So even though we do have these bungees, of course, holding it, we've still got the natural spring in the legs and they are doing quite a lot of effort to hold the dog up. If I kill the uh, O-drives now, of course it falls right down. So these are really just there for a bit of stability and a bit of anti-gravity. So it will actually stand up by itself and we can see some of that natural spring that we've got in the legs there just with the holding power, but it's not gonna stand up on two legs at a time so we can't take the other two legs off the ground. Um, so I didn't miscalculate completely based on the strength of the legs, uh, but for the experiments, we're gonna need to string it up. So now I've just turned up the compliancy on this leg and we can see now it's hitting the ground far less hard. And if I put my hand underneath, it's got much less impact pushing down, pushing the dog all around, which is the main purpose for testing this with four legs. And remember that compliancy is just reading the actual motor encoder position and trying to drive the motor some way there and that makes it compliant. So don't forget to check out part one in the last video to see in fact how I did that and we're really back to where we were with that. So now we need to get the other legs working. And that's it back to no compliancy. So just driving that motor and using the natural spring in the motor holding current to push the dog all around when the foot hits the ground. And that's what we want to avoid. So this is completely hanging up, but of course we've got that diagonal stepping called the trot gate. Um, it's going to be quite springy, but let's put it on the ground and see what it does. And this is with no compliance at all. So 
So we can see that's sometimes stable, but it does tend to tip towards one leg. And when it does so, that leg pushes back really hard and that pushes it back the other way. So it's not looking too bad. Let's just get that in the middle. But it is jostling it round quite a lot. So I'm just going to let the bungees out a little bit more and we'll let the dog uh, have a bit, bit more free motion. Let's just lower the crane. Yeah, now we can see that's much worse when it tips to one side and the leg pushes it back. And um, just that's a completely wobbly mess. Right. So now I've just turned up compliancy on these joints just to a value of 0.3, so hardly any compliancy at all. Remember, a compliancy of one will mean that I'd be able to completely back drive the motor and it'd follow me wherever I went. In the example last time, we were using 0.5, but obviously we've got more weight of gravity on here. So let's see how that goes. So that seems kind of okay. Let's just give it a, a push and... So if I grab one of these legs now, in fact, if I stick something under it, it's far less upset about me doing that than it was when we didn't have the compliance, of course, because now it's trying to mold itself to the ground. And back to the ground, and it should return to level without lots of nasty wobble. I've now turned up compliance to 0.5, which is what we used in the last video, so should be even less upset about me doing that now. In fact, it's not really even, uh, yeah, not too worried about, you know, being shoved around and all these things happening. Let's try and get that smooth under there. So kind of adaptive. And not too bothered at all. So pretty much it does what I expected it to um, from the last video. Obviously, as you push it down, it can comply with the ground with varying amounts, and that makes it kick back less and makes it effectively more stable. It's a shame this prototype's a bit heavy for its own legs, and we can't sort of let it free to see what happens. Uh, but basically, you know, these bungees, as I said at the beginning, are pretty loose. It's just a bit of an anti-gravity measure, um, although it does uh, spring around on these bungees as well if it loses its centre position. But ultimately, is this any use for open dog development? That was the purpose, was to build a compliant dog, see how it responded, and then build that into open dog in a simulated way. Of course, we can't back drive those joints. Well, I think that this is kind of okay, but the spring we get from back driving does make it a bit unpredictable. So if we had real springs, or we had these sort of simulated springs through current control, we still have a bit of an issue uh, in controlling that because it's unpredictable. We're still without loads of control over the top looking at those positions trying to dampen the spring and make it compliant. So I think if I were going to continue with a dog like this we probably need foot sensors, we probably need to make the joints compliant while they're in the air till they hit the ground and then turn off compliance and leave them pretty rigid or turn compliance right down. That still does leave us a problem with dampening the spring where we really need the compliance but of course that makes it sink under gravity as well. There was some talk about putting springs on the back of the legs here to pull these up, but of course um, that's a bit of a fallacy because if we've got a spring tight enough to hold the dog upward, then when we want to pull this leg down, we still need a motor strong enough to drive the spring, which is strong enough to hold the dog's weight. So we'd be much better off just having an actuator that's strong enough to hold its weight in the first place, and then varying that current control to vary the spring tension and vary compliancy to make it more or less compliant. So I'm actually quite looking forward to going back to my predictable rigid joints and I think what we're going to do is take the best aspects from the springy dog and try and sort of simulate those with the rigid joints. And we don't really want to simulate a spring because as we've seen walking on springs is pretty hard without loads of over control over the top. So I think what I really want is just the compliance so the leg to stop when it hits the ground. And I can do that pretty easily just by putting foot switches in so the squashy feet I made when I made open dog and then using that to stop the leg and using the inertial measurement unit they're already using to try and shift its centre of gravity to keep it stable. So I think that's really what's come out of the development of the other dog, which I'm going to just keep for now. We might go back and put foot switches in sometime if we want to do more development on compliant legs. But of course, most of what I do in this channel is robotics development. I do sometimes finish projects, but a lot of the things, particularly open dog and walking robots, are ongoing development, and those take some time. And of course, I show all of that on video, which is the purpose of building test legs and test rigs and all of those things to cover all of those eventualities. 
OpenDog is open source, and you can find all those things on my GitHub. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, and I also have a YouTube channel membership, so you can get the videos up to a week early, so probably patrons already have next week's video by the time this has gone out. I also have a t-shirt store, the links are in the description below, where I have t-shirts of some of the things I've made, so have a look at that as well. Alright, that's all for now.